I've been vegan for 15 years, so I thought I could answer some questions about veganism. I googled biggest questions about veganism and I got this handy dandy list. There's one repeat, so 23 questions total. How is veganism different from vegetarianism? If we're talking purely what is or isn't eaten, so just diet, vegan diet, vegetarian diet, the answer is pretty simple. Vegetarian means you don't eat animals, so no chicken, no fish, no turkey, no cow. Vegans also don't eat animals, so we are vegetarian, but we take it a step further and also remove any products that come from animals, so no dairy, no eggs. So a vegan diet is obviously more restrictive than a vegetarian vegetarian diet. There are other terms too that can make it a bit confusing. You may have heard pescatarian, that means someone who doesn't eat meat except for fish, so they're not really a vegetarian because they do eat meat, just some meat. Lacto-vegetarian, so like milk vegetarian, so they eat dairy but they don't eat eggs. Then there's ovo-vegetarian, which is the opposite of that. They do eat eggs but they don't eat dairy. Lacto-ovo is just plain vegetarian, right? They don't eat meat, they eat dairy, they eat eggs. There are a few others too. You probably won't hear any of these except for pescatarian. Some people do use that term, but really most of these are just used in like scientific studies, right? So if you read a lot of scientific research on vegan diets, vegetarian diets, then you'd see it. Point is, vegetarian means no animals, vegan means no animals or animal products. Where do you get your protein from pretty much everything we eat, aside from like certain refined foods like granulated sugar and oil? All foods have some amount of protein. Even a banana has like a little over a gram and vegans aren't just eating bananas, most of us anyway. Ideally, we eat a wide variety of food and we include foods with higher protein per calorie like beans. Many, but not all of us, choose to eat more processed protein sources like TVP, textured vegetable protein. You can use it to make a ground beef substitute. There are also pre-made vegan meats that you can buy so you don't have to rehydrate anything or add any spices, all that stuff for you. Gardein, Beyond Meat, Impossible Foods. A recent study on Brazil vegans found a sizable percentage of protein requirements were met by these sorts of foods. Again, we don't have to eat these processed protein sources to meet protein needs, even to get like well above the RDA, but many of us, myself included, choose to include them in our diet. I strength train multiple times per week, so I like to have a protein powder pretty much every day. I put it in smoothies. I like this Vega Made Simple one. I also use things like TVP and soy curls and pre-made stuff. I really like the Morningstar Farm tenders. My favorite burger by far is the Morningstar Farms steakhouse style burger but most of my protein comes from whole and minimally processed plants. Some of my favorites are tofu, soy milk, black beans, edamame, hemp seeds. Are vegans healthier? Short answer, yes. Vegans eat more fruits and vegetables, more whole grains, more legumes, more nuts and seeds than omnivores. As a result, we get significantly more fiber and significantly less saturated fat and our cholesterol is better, we have a lower BMI. Because of all this, we likely have lower rates of various common diseases like heart disease, diabetes, colon cancer. We're also less likely to smoke and more likely to exercise, which again, helps to reduce your risk for various diseases. That doesn't mean you can't be an unhealthy vegan. There are lots of unhealthy vegan foods. I remember sometime during my early days being vegan, I was on some forum and there was a guy saying, whatever, it doesn't matter what you eat. It's all about the animals. And he was talking about just eating beer and like chips or Oreos or something. Not a great idea for him or for the animals, right? If he eats so poorly that he gets sick, maybe he stops being vegan. But yes, Western vegans on average are healthier than Western omnivores. Do vegans get enough protein? Short answer, yes. The majority of studies find that vegans get plenty of protein well above the RDA. Long answer, more protein is probably a good idea for various reasons, especially if you strength train. And since basically everyone should strength train, everyone should probably aim for a bit more protein. Again, legumes, nuts and seeds too, although they are higher in fat, you definitely get more protein per calorie from something like lentils. Mock meats and protein powders, just a serving of these can get you 20 grams or more. I personally aim for 100 grams of protein per day and yeah, that serving of protein powder helps me get there. Is veganism expensive? It certainly can be. If you eat lots of the mock meats and the cheeses 
and even some of the plant milks can be very, very expensive. For instance, you can buy two pounds of cheddar for $9.00. There are no two pound blocks of vegan cheese, of course, but you can buy an eight ounce pack of slices for $5. So we have 28 cents per ounce versus 63 cents per ounce. My husband and I have three kids, a seven-year-old, almost eight-year-old, five-year-old, and a two-year-old. We eat a good amount of mock meat, eating them pretty much every day. We use some vegan cheeses like Daya and Via Life. We eat a good amount of vegetables. All of this can really add up, and yet we spend no more than the USDA low-cost food plan, which is about $1,100 a month. That's just my own personal experience. It's just an anecdote, obviously, but the data does seem to agree. Study after study finds a vegan diet to be cheaper than your standard American diet. Especially today, while animal products like eggs and beef have increased in price dramatically in these last few years, vegan staples like beans have stayed roughly the same. Or they're already so cheap to begin with that even a 30% increase in price is only like 60 cents. Is it hard to be vegan? Not for me, but again, I've been vegan a very long time. I think for most people, unfortunately, it can be pretty hard. It's why people don't adopt it in the first place, despite agreeing with us. Many people agree with us that farm animals are treated horrendously. It's not normal to be vegan. It's still very much fringe and no one expects it of you. In fact, many people would rather you not be vegan because being vegan maybe it affects what restaurants you go to, you know, it's awkward. We don't live in a vegan world. Arguably, we live in a vegan hostile world. So yeah, it can be kind of hard. Luckily, anyone can make a big change for the animals, for the environment, and for their health without going all the way, without going vegan. Replacing some amount of animal products with plants is awesome. Even starting small with just Meatless Monday, awesome. Don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Don't let the difficulties of veganism stop you from eating more plants. Why go vegan? Because animals feel pain and they don't want to die and we can eat plants instead. It's pretty simple. Do plants feel pain? They have nothing to feel pain with, so no, they do not feel pain. But if they did, you would kill more of them by eating animals rather than the plants directly because animals have to eat things as well to grow and they're eating lots of plants. You would kill fewer plants just by eating the plants. What is veganism? So that first question about veganism versus vegetarianism, I talked about diet specifically, but veganism isn't really about diet. It's a philosophy. Veganism is a philosophy and way of living which seeks to exclude as far as is possible and practicable all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals for food, clothing, or any other purpose. So it's not just diet, right? We have clothing, leather and wool, not vegan. Cosmetics, there are red eyeshadows with carmine. Carmine is beetles. Zoos, we're not really into caging animals just for our entertainment. As I said earlier, I'm vegan because animals feel pain and they don't want to die and we can eat other foods. Well, we can also wear other clothing, wear other makeup, and avoid zoos. But again, this is not about perfection. I certainly don't look down upon the vegan who maybe isn't careful about the eyeshadow they buy or who does go to a zoo. I've been to zoos a few times since going vegan just to spend time with family. Um, actually, the last time was the last time for a reason. A polar bear was like obviously really distressed. The pacing back and forth, you might have seen videos of polar bears doing this in zoos. No more zoos for me. So veganism isn't just about diet, but we often talk about it as though it's just diet because diet plays the biggest role. It's the main way we cause animal suffering right? We don't buy eyeshadow three times a day. We don't buy leather boots three times a day. But many of us do eat meat, dairy, eggs three times per day, every day. So that's why veganism is so focused on what we eat. Are vegans against pets? Some are actually, not the majority, but some are. They believe that keeping any animal in captivity is wrong, even domesticated animals like cats and dogs. But I would say most think keeping a companion animal is fine, as long as the animal is well cared for. Well cared for is a bit contentious. Personally, I believe keeping cats indoors, I think it's cruel. And then there's the food issue. Dogs can be vegan pretty easily. There are lots of uh, balanced vegan brands out there. Cats can probably be vegan too, at least in theory, 
right? Getting a cat to do what you want, to eat what you give, no. Which means lots of animals are killed to feed cats and dogs. Lots of vegans feed animals to their companion animals. I'm sympathetic to that, but personally, I just can't justify that in my own life. That's why we don't have cats. Maybe a dog in the future, but no cats. Do vegans need to take supplements? Yes. Plants basically have no B12, so we have to supplement for that. There are vegan foods fortified with B12, so B12 has been added to them. Nutritional yeast, certain plant milks, but it's generally not recommended to rely on fortified foods alone. You know, you might just stop eating them or eating them less frequently or change brands and that brand doesn't have any B12. Taking a B12 supplement once a day or once a week is more reliable. Iodine. Most people, especially children, get a lot of iodine from milk because they use betadine to clean the machines. It's so natural, right? Side note, a recent study on cow's milk in the U.S. found huge variability in iodine content. Some kids could be getting way above the RDA if they are drinking two or more cups a day. Vegans can get theirs from seaweed, iodized salt, or a supplement. There are lots of multis that have iodine. Long chain fatty acids, EPA and DHA might also be a good idea. We don't really know for sure, but it seems that most vegan dietitians do recommend supplementing for those. Vitamin D, although that's really not a vegan issue since like most people don't get enough sun and or want to protect their skin from the sun and would rather meet their vitamin D needs with a supplement. Is honey vegan? Well, honey does come from bees and bees are animals, so no, honey is not vegan. Now, some vegans, including myself, have argued that honey is not nearly as concerning as milk and eggs, certainly not meat. Bees don't have the same capacity for suffering as cows and chickens, and the honey industry is not nearly as cruel as the beef, dairy, egg, poultry industries. But that doesn't mean honey isn't cruel. I made a video last year about beekeepers intentionally chilling their bees, forcing them to be cold enough to cluster, to huddle together. So while I don't often talk about honey, I do avoid honey myself. Is vegan food good? Sure, if it's good, right? You could make an unappetizing vegan meal or a delicious one. With the huge variety of foods that we have, like, yes, vegan food can be very delicious. I think this question is more about, like, vegan substitutes. You know, when people say vegan food, they're talking about the fake meats and cheeses and stuff and, like, replacing standard recipes, right? So spaghetti and meatballs using Beyond Meat, that's what they're asking about when they ask if vegan food is good. Um, yeah, I mean, many people think so. I personally cannot stand the taste of Beyond Meat, so no, that would not be good to me. But I really like these Morningstar Farm ones that, of course, they don't make anymore. <laughs> we like different things. You know, some people, including omnivores, buy various mock meats and like them. Sometimes people can't even tell that it's not cow or chicken. On the other hand, some people hate, like, every veggie burger, every vegan nugget that they try. What is a plant-based diet? Well, plant-based means based on plants, right? So a mostly plant diet. But most people seem to use it as like 100% plant-based vegan. On packaging, I often see 100% plant-based and that seems to always be vegan. I don't think I've seen an exception to that. Um, I've also seen products say plant-based, but they do contain like whey or something. It's not a regulated term, so it's kind of a mess. I would say that vegans eat a plant-based diet and often you will see vegans use the phrase plant-based. I use it too sometimes, but a plant-based diet isn't necessarily vegan and plant-based is not veganism, right? It's just a diet. It has nothing to do with ethics. What's wrong with dairy and eggs? Man, what isn't wrong with dairy and eggs? Dairy cows and egg-laying hens are products, so when they are no longer useful, they're killed. To me, that alone makes it immoral. You don't need to know anything else about these industries. That alone is wrong. But we can talk about the other things too. Male chicks are killed, ground up alive, actually. Hens are packed together in filthy conditions, dairy cows too. And this is all industry standard stuff. This doesn't include the extra cruelty that workers sometimes participate in. Is it possible to acquire dairy and eggs without the cruelty? I mean, for cows, that's pretty hard. What are you gonna do with the baby cow? You, you can't sell it off for veal. You gotta care for that cow. What are you gonna do 
when the mama cow, when the dairy cow is no longer productive, you have to continue to care for her. You can't just kill her off. This would make milk so expensive. So of course, farms do not do this. Eggs are easier. I mean, chickens are smaller. That alone makes it easier. They're easier to feed. Um, they're easier to house. And yeah, you could rescue a hen and eat that hen's eggs. Some people do this. I personally see no issue with it, but many vegans do because you're still using the animals and you're still using animal products. It's an interesting discussion for sure, but let's be real. No one is doing this. I know I said some people, but like it's, it's barely any. Most people are getting their eggs from here. Why are vegans called vegan? So vegan was coined by a member of the UK Vegetarian Society, Donald Watson and his wife, Dorothy, in 1944. The word is based on the first three and last two letters of vegetarian because it marked, in Watson's words, the beginning and end of vegetarian. The Vegan News asked its readers if they could think of anything better than vegan to stand for non-dairy vegetarian. They suggested Alvega, Neo-Vegetarian, Dairy Bond, Viton, Benivore, Sanivores, and that one, Bomanger. Bo Manger? I mean, come on, how'd you not pick that? <laughs> I know I said veganism can be hard and I, I get that it can be, but holy crap, can you imagine trying to be vegan in 1944, begging your government during World War II and all the rationing for nuts so you can make plant milks? And because of people like Donald Watson sticking to their guns and sacrificing, veganism has spread and we have so many more options today. Yeah, I'm grateful. Why do vegans eat fake meat? Short answer, because we like them. Long answer, well, some vegans miss the taste and texture of meat. Some like the amount of protein per calorie. Some like the convenience. Having kids and being able to just throw some vegan tenders in the oven, like, that's pretty nice. Are humans designed to eat meat? Designed is in quotes, so I'm assuming like evolved. Did humans evolve to eat meat? Many of our ancestors ate meat. We can certainly eat meat, a lot of meat, and survive for a long time. Being omnivorous means we can eat a lot of different foods, but that doesn't mean that a diet with meat is the healthiest. Evidence on plant-based diets being best is pretty overwhelming at this point. Is a 100% plant-based diet, so a vegan diet, is that even healthier than a plant based diet with some amount of animal products? Possibly, although if it is, it's probably only marginally so. And I would guess has to do with the animal products being consumed, right? If you're eating plant-based but still consuming a good amount of beef, like not great, but if it's, you know, low fat dairy, probably very little, if any difference there. Point is, plant-based diets are ideal and there's really no evidence that adding meat offers benefits, unless your plant-based diet is really unbalanced. Like maybe you don't eat beans, so you don't get enough iron and zinc. Yeah, some meat could help you there, or you could just eat beans. Some will argue that meat has nutrients that plants don't, like taurine and creatine, and that studies have shown these to be beneficial. But these studies are using synthetic creatine, right? They're using like creatine powder. They're not feeding participants meat. You would have to eat a lot of meat to get the same dose. So even if you're worried about these nutrients, you're better off just taking them as a supplement. Are you a perfect vegan? Yep. Aren't free range eggs okay? Nope. Okay, I'll expand on that one. Free range may be better, but that doesn't mean it's okay. Better than doesn't mean cruelty free. We have the male chicks issue that that doesn't go away with free range. Beak trimming is allowed, no anesthesia required. Egg laying hens are still sent to slaughter once they're no longer productive. Several investigations have been done on different free range farms. They are always horrific. Here's a representative for Tyson and a manager of a non free range farm laughing about the very idea of free range, how much outdoor time the birds actually get versus how it's marketed. This was confirmed by Animal Justice Project. They visited three free range farms in the UK and documented no hens being let outside at all. Although there were no bird flu restrictions in the area at the time or within the last few months, on all farms, we filmed empty ranges and pop holes that had been unopened for as many as four days. The truth is, acknowledging chickens' sentience and treating them kindly is far more expensive than treating them as just a product. So be very skeptical of free range. These are still companies. They are still mostly interested in profit. What can I eat? 
so many things. Like ideally you focus on, you know, whole plants, legumes, whole grains, fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. There are so many websites now dedicated to showing you how to make these foods tasty. I also highly recommend checking out veganhealth.org, specifically the nutrition tips for vegans page. That will help you learn how to eat a balanced vegan diet. What do vegans eat? So kind of the same as the last one, but yeah, so many things. I just did a couple videos looking at vegans on YouTube and TikTok and what they eat, and it's all different. For me, breakfast and lunch are usually the same. Breakfast is either a protein smoothie or protein oatmeal, usually. A big salad or big bowl of soup for lunch or dinner leftovers. And then dinner is whatever I'm making for everybody. Spaghetti and meatballs, tofu and roasted veggies, stir fries curries, soups, tacos, quesadillas, burger and fries. Last one, do you ever miss meat? No, but again, I've been vegan for a pretty long time and I was never a big meat eater to begin with. And I eat a good amount of protein, again, like 100 grams a day. I think sometimes people who are missing meat, they're maybe missing protein. Studies have found protein to be more satiating. Today, I'm pretty disgusted by meat and it's, you know, only gotten more so over the years, like bacon. I used to think even just a few years ago that the smell of bacon was good. Now, no. It's kind of cool how much your taste buds can change over time or your, your smell buds. That's it for me. Thank you so much, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this. I thought this was a fun, um, easier kind of video after the last one that people really seem to like. I'm getting a lot of new subscribers from that video. So like, yeah. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please do like and subscribe. And thank you so much to my members here on YouTube and my patrons at patreon.com slash unnaturalvegan. I do post exclusive content for tier two members and patrons. I do a vlog and then I do a controversial video, something unrelated to veganism. Thanks again, guys. New video soon. I'm really not perfect, obviously. I just felt the need to say that. I like finally just got in the habit of looking at, you know, like over the counter medication. That was the hardest thing. I just wouldn't even think about it and then would buy something with like lactose. It's not a huge deal, right? But yeah, like a year ago, I bought some fruit snacks with honey and like they had bees all over the box and it was like, save the bees. And I, I don't, I don't know.